Woo! Let's go. Here we go. Wait, hold on. Here we go. You don't have to live in pain anymore. This is the podcast where you'll learn the stories, tips, and tools to get back to your path to health. I'm Dr. J. Dude, and this is Back At It with Dr. Decompression. Welcome back. Season two of the Back At It with Dr. Decompression podcast. So excited for season two. A lot of episodes, a lot of guests, more information, how we're going to help people with spinal decompression. Episode one, going to talk about patient trends. What am I seeing in my office? And what have I seen for 13 years of clinical experience so I can share and give you tips on what to look for? Before we dive into the topic, I want to thank our sponsors, PillowWise USA, our patients, myself, our team. We love their pillows. Helps with better sleep, waking up with less neck pain, and an overall better sleeping experience. Check them out at PillowWiseUSA.com. And second, Power Plates. We love it. Power Plate USA. It's those vibration plates. It's really good to stabilize the lower back and the neck. It's exercises that we do in our office that help patients recover from chronic pain and disc bulges. So we love Power Plate. Check them out. Powerplate.com. Those are our sponsors. Thank you. Let's dive into it. 13 years of clinical experience. Now, that brings me on trends that I'm seeing with neck and lower back. I'm going to give two case studies and how those follow trends. So the first case study is the lower back, what we're seeing with lower back trends. In society today, everyone is sitting. There's sit-stand desks, but you and I both know that you have a sit-stand desk and you have a meeting or a Zoom and you end up for two hours grinding and you're still sitting down at the computer. So the reason that you got to get up and move around, when you sit, certain muscles are overactive and other muscles become weak or inactive. It's called lower cross syndrome. Basically, your, your quads and your hip flexors get tight. Your butt hamstring muscles get weak. They don't engage. And that causes a slew of events in the lower back. You'll have your back muscles called the erector spinae muscles. Think about those are the muscles that run up the spine. So when you feel your spine, the back, and you're like, oh, those muscles feel tight next to the spine, it's probably the erector spinae muscles. When they work too hard, the little small muscles in your back that you can't see or can't feel, they're called intrinsic muscles. Think to yourself, intrinsic muscles, what does that mean? It means they do the job when you're not thinking of it. It's not like a bicep curl where you're contracting your arms. It's a small muscle that stabilizes called the multifidus muscle. If that's not working, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to go to lean and pick something up and your back's going to get out. Or you're going to go tie your shoe and your back. All those, that cascade of events leads to back problems. That's the trend that you see for the last 15, 20 years with work and with sitting. Now, how does that present as a patient? You might be thinking, how does that present clinically? Someone will have low-grade back pain. Maybe they had a flare-up a few years ago. It went away. They did PT. They did traditional chiropractic, acupuncture, something. Or maybe they just stretched and it went away. And then something happened. Something different this time. If you've had back pain, you know what I'm talking about. You either bent over to pick up your son or your daughter. You went to go lean to grab a paperclip. Or you were picking up a heavy bag of cement and you talk, something happened, or it could be emotionally you're going through something where you had a lot of stress. And just like that, your back went out. You've got really bad back pain. You've got pain to your butt. You've got leg pain. You probably have a herniated disc. We'll talk in future episodes about disc herniation, disc bulge, disc extrusion. We'll get into that next episode. I want to talk about, though, the mechanism of how this happens. So we've got a disc injury and it's causing leg pain. What are your options? Well, it's important to know if you have a disc injury in the back, it's not going down your legs on the side. It's important to know if you're having a disc injury that's only in the back of your spine or if it's going on the side that present different symptoms. If you have a disc bulge, you gotta start a few types of exercises. You got to do some Cobra exercises. We've talked about those in episode one. Um, If you follow us, reminder to follow us 
on Instagram, follow us on TikTok and all the social platforms and follow our podcast for tips on exercises and different things that I'm describing. So Cobra exercises, when you extend back and when you do that, it allows the disc, it allows that disc to reabsorb potentially. That's what happens there. When you extend, sometimes it'll reabsorb. Good exercise to try. If it hurts, guys, if you're doing something that hurts, stop doing it. Try it a few times. If it's worse, stop doing it. If it feels better, do more of it. It is kind of common sense when you think about it. Had a patient present, same exact story. Had back pain a year ago, kind of went away through some exercises, through some conservative treatment, went to go pick up her daughter, picked her up, felt a pop, in bed for a week, trying conservative things like possibly medication, chiropractic work, massages, nothing's denting the pain. 10 out of 10 pain, can't sleep. Number one symptom that we get for disc herniation, coughing exacerbates the pain. When you <laughs> cough, it increases what's called the intrathecal pressure. The intrathecal pressure is the pressure along the fecal sac of the spinal cord. When you cough or bear down, it increases the pressure. Typically, that should not be a painful movement. If you have a disc herniation, disc bulge, some type of material in that area, when you cough or bear down, it increases pain. Number one sign of a disc bulge. She called us, we spoke for her consult. That was one of the symptoms. You've got a disc bulge, we need to get MRI. Through MRI imaging, we detected three disc herniations. We set her up on a treatment plan of spinal decompression, treatment plan of cold laser, power plate exercises. Eight weeks later, zero pain. Absolutely zero pain. The coolest part, she couldn't pick up her kids for eight weeks. That was the saddest part. She couldn't pick up her kids because it hurt so bad. And eight weeks later, she's picking up her kids. She's playing with her kids. She's running with her kids. She's at work again. She is a whole new person. And the thing about the pain that people are with disc herniations, if you've had it or if a significant other has had it, you know their face, they are not there. They're in so much pain, they're not there. So that's a really cool experience. And that that's the trend that we're seeing now. The trend is I have chronic lower back pain. I sit all day. I'm not doing the stretches that I should be doing. What stretches should you be doing? You should be doing things like cat cows. You should be doing exercises like bird dogs. You should be doing psoas and hip flexor stretches. On our page, really cool exercise that you should be doing every day to combat the alignment of sitting. And then you should just not sit all day. Sitting all day is creating a problem for your spine that's going to lead to a disc bulge down the road. Again, when you sit all day, it creates a cascade of imbalances in the muscles. It recruits other muscles. It causes ligament laxity. The ligaments are what support the spine, and you'll be more prone to a disc bulge. Don't sit all day. Stand. Walk around. Go to the bathroom. Get some water. Do Move. Do things different. So that's the trend that we're seeing for the lower back. And that's a case study that we know how to help without the intervention of injections and surgeries. This patient did not need spinal surgery. I'm wondering if you think what she was told that she needed by other healthcare providers. Well, she was told that she needed an injection and that she was told if the injection didn't work that she would need spinal surgery. Interestingly enough, right before she started seeing us, she was going on a vacation. Hey, I'll get, let's just get the spinal injection. It'll help me for my vacation. No big deal. It's super safe. When I come back, I'll try to avoid the spinal surgery. Your head, you're thinking, hey, that makes sense. Yeah. She gets the injection. Do you know that there's risks to getting spinal injections? Spinal injections with cortisone, they help decrease inflammation on the short term. Long term, the consequences, it decreases the stability of the joint. So it can be prone to other injuries down the road. 
Number two, which I hadn't mentioned yet, this patient, they punctured an area in the spinal cord. She had nausea for a week. She was throwing up. She had headaches. She couldn't walk. It was a horrible experience. Are these side effects rare? Yeah, but they're also side effects. So be mindful when you're deciding where you're going to go with your treatment. She comes back eight weeks later, as I said, 100% better. That's what we see every day. So when patients ask, does it work? Can you help me? Have you seen this before? This patient will call her Jennifer. You know, her name is not Jennifer, but I have to say a different name. Um, patients like Jennifer come in and ask us if we can help them. My job, my goal here right now to talk to you, it works. We're going to put you through testing to make sure that it works. The decompression program works, helps reabsorb disc bulges, and helps get patients life back with their family and their loved ones and what they like to do. And that's what we're seeing every day. That's the number one trend. Second trend, guys, that we're seeing. Number two on the trend list is the upper back. It's a similar sequence, but I want you to go next time you're at Starbucks or Pete's, Costco, at the doctor's office, just start looking around. Look at the crowd. Every single person is down. So if, you, if you're listening, you can't see this. But if you're watching, you can see. Just hold your phone and look down. That right there is causing so much stress on the lower part of the cervical spine, the C5, C6, C7. What patients are presenting with now are headaches, neck pain, pain into these three fingers. For the listeners, it's pain or numbness or tingling in your thumb, index finger, or ring finger. Numbness, tingling sensation in those. And then what we're seeing is a referring pain into the scapula, this random burning pain in the scapula. I see these cases three to five times a week in my office. Same exact case. Every month, I see more and more of these cases. Why is this happening? The trends that I'm seeing out, outside of my office that present to me. Everyone's looking at their phone or everyone's looking at their computer. And for the, the people that are watching, you can see I'm hunched down on my screen. I'm locked in on a Zoom call for 30 minutes. Maybe it's 60 minutes. That's the problem. You need to stand straight. Don't lean forward. When you lean forward, it's a very similar cascade of event as the lower cross syndrome I described, but it's called upper cross syndrome because it affects the upper body, not the lower body. That's why. What happens? These called neck flexors, they're in the front of your neck. They become weak and stretched. The back muscles, I'm pointing to the, my scalp and all the way down to my shoulder blades. Those muscles get super tight. Your pec muscles get tight. You get rounded shoulders. And then your rhomboids and the muscles in the back become weak. Similar to lower cross syndrome. Very similar. We need to change that. Obviously, you can't stare at a computer screen all day and you need to remove the phone. What I want you to do is bring the phone up to your eye level. See that? Eye level. My chin is tucked. I'm looking at the phone. Do not bring the phone down to your chest. That will cause the problem. Number one, lift your phone up. Make sure your computer monitor is straight with your eye line or down an inch or two. What exercises can you do at home? I love the chin tuck. This is on our platform. The chin tuck is when you stand, tuck your chin, hold it, really engage those front flexor muscles of the neck. If you're exercising and you're doing weights or bands, resistance bands are awesome. You've got to focus on bringing these shoulders back. Do some rows, do some Ys, do anything that brings the shoulder back. If these aren't helping, give these a try. These should help correct your posture. If these aren't helping, the trend I'm seeing, which not many people will discover, a disc herniation at the C5, C6, or C6, C7. There's a disc issue. Why is that important? The nerve from those two areas 
goes into the hand. Also, the nerve refers pain under the shoulder blade in the scapula. We have a case study to demonstrate what I'm seeing in the office with these cervical issues and phone issues. Patient presented two weeks ago, two weeks ago, has an MRI, has tried, has tried all the conservative measurements that you could think of. The doctor recommended spinal surgery. She found us through the podcast, part of the mission of the podcast, and she does not want the surgery. She's terrified of surgery. Through a consultation, a very thorough evaluation, determined it was not only safe for her to do spinal decompression, but it would be highly effective if we did it. Two weeks into the program, she's suffering. I see this everywhere. She's suffering from neck pain, pain referring into the scapula. These two fingers are numb. Constant headaches, ear pressure. Two weeks into treatment, pulling. As we're just relieving pressure in the spine. Two weeks into it, headaches completely gone. Her nerve pain in her fingers, 50% better. What does that mean? That means that if she felt it all day, she feels it half of the day now or every other day. That tennis ball, there's a tennis ball. You feel like there's a tennis ball in your scapula. You've tried everything. Nothing's working. That tennis ball, the pain's gone. The referring pain, because the source of the problem is the C5, C6 disc herniation. We have the MRI that shows it. The testing revealed that was the pain, the source of the pain. The examination showed that when we pull at a specific angle, it would help. Two weeks into treatment. She's over 70% better. Overall, this woman was told that she needed spine surgery and there was no other option. And she's 70% better in two weeks. This is what we're doing with spinal decompression. This is the trend that I'm seeing with neck issues. And that's how we can help you get past your pain and get your life back with decompression. If you're struggling with shoulder blade pain, and you've tried multiple things, physical therapy, chiropractic, acupuncture, massage. If you've tried everything with that particular tennis ball size pain and it's not going away, you most likely have a C5, C6 disc herniation affecting the nerve, referring pain into the shoulder blade. That's the problem. I see this problem three to five times a week in my office. Try the stretches, try the strengthening exercises. If not, I'm gonna show our uh, the watchers, I'm gonna show the viewers, if you're watching, I'm pointing to a spine, two bones and the disc and the herniation is touching the nerve. That's the problem. As we're starting to learn here, and my goal with this podcast, everyone, again, my story is that my back was saved and fixed with spinal decompression four years ago. I avoided spinal surgery four years ago. My goal is to help as many people as possible, let them know about spinal decompression, how it works, what it does, and show that it works. What we're going to do, we're going to set the angle at the table. We're going to slowly pull apart. It's going to take inflammation off of the nerve, number one. Number two, it's going to create this reverse vacuum where the disc is going to reabsorb. You're listening, you're on your walk, you're watching. This guy always talks about disc bulges reabsorbing. Like there's the doctor said it doesn't work, the PT, the all these people said it doesn't work. This guy keeps talking about it. We've got the pre and post MRIs that show the discs reabsorb. It works, guys. Okay. You got to give it a try. Those are the three steps. If you've got neck pain, shoulder blade referring pain, pain into your fingers, give those exercises a try. Tuck the chin, hold it. Number two, do the rhomboid strengthening exercises. Number three, if that's not working, call me so we can do decompression. If not, I can connect you with someone across the country, one of our practitioners that can help you. If any of these things are harmful or they bother you, 
discontinue doing them and call me after that. Don't do something if it keeps hurting. That's the trend. Those are the trends that I'm seeing every day in our office. And we're helping people. It's incredible how we're helping people. If you're struggling with anything, I want you to try one of the exercises or the stretches that I recommended today. Try it. The hardest part is taking that first step. Okay? That's it. Episode one. Next episode, episode two, I talked about herniated discs. Boy, I've talked about the terms of discs. Episode two, we are going to uncover what the heck is the disc? How do you get nutrients to the disc? What are the different types of injuries to discs? Um, so you are very well informed of what I'm talking about. And in the future, you know what to do. I'd like to thank our sponsor, PillowWise. For more information, go to PillowWiseUSA.com. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, follow us on Apple. Back at it with Dr. G Compression. We're on Instagram, YouTube. We're everywhere. Don't forget to follow us. We'll see you for episode two. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening.